On today's Star Wars Legends lore video, we talk about rail guns. Hey guys, this is Eckhart's Letter. Hello and welcome to another Star Wars Legends lore video. Today's content is once again sponsored by my second YouTube channel, X2. Those of you who have been with the channel for a really long time might remember that early on I used to do rambling videos fairly frequently. Now my channel has grown to a fairly large size and the expectations are quite different, especially from new subscribers, so I can't really do these rambling videos anymore, but I can on my second channel. I'm gonna aim once or twice a week to put out a video, whether it's 15 minutes or three hours, talking about a certain topic in Star Wars. Patreons get first choice of topic, but if that's something you're interested in, make sure to subscribe to the second channel. There's a link down in the description and leave any interesting topics you might have down in the comments. Sorry for taking so long to get into the meat of today's video, but let's get started. So I'm gonna split up the conversation of rail guns into two categories, handheld weapons and larger weapons which include ship-based, ground-based, and other weapon types. And while I might say railguns, I'm referring specifically to all weapons which operate by accelerating an object to extreme speeds. So let's get right into our conversation by looking at large railguns and projectile weapons. More specifically, let's start with space warfare. Projectile weapons were extremely common in the olden days of capital ship battles. As particle shields became more common, most ships transitioned to higher yield energy weapons, but for a while, railguns and other projectile based weapons were really the main source of damage in capital ship engagements. The Khmeri warship, for example, which was a battleship active about 10,000 years before the Battle of Yavin, was armed primarily with the mass driver cannon, which actually fired refined asteroids. The Khmeri line would exist for a long time in various states with many famous ships including the Cal class battleship, which continued to use the mass driver cannon but primarily for orbital bombardment purposes. Fast forward to modern day, ship based projectile weapons with the exception of torpedoes or missiles are far less common than energy weapons. This however isn't universal, the Zon consortium continued to use mass drivers regularly including for example as one of their main weapons for the Keldabi class battleship. Some capital ships also use projectile technology for flak weaponry. In terms of other space weaponry, Star Wars also has its own version of Rods from God technology. Basically large projectiles with an engine attached which would drive themselves into a target. Usually they'd be stationed in orbit and would attack ground based targets. The Yuuzhan Vong also used projectile weapons in both their starships and other vehicles, for example the Yarrick core. But moving on, besides space based weapons Weapons, let's examine some other uses of railgun technology. And all of this technology operates through the same principle. You make big things go fast and you shoot them at bad guys. Projectile technology is a lot more prominent on the ground in the modern Star Wars era because you're more often firing against unshielded targets. That's not always the case though. We have examples of ground based anti space weapons which use projectile technology. For example, the hyper velocity cannon operates by pounding shields shielded targets with continued bursts of high speed matter. Much more common, however, is vehicle mounted projectile weapons. This is something that the Republic used fairly consistently. For example, the ATTE and various other walkers are equipped with mass driver cannons. You also have the Dug, who use railguns as artillery, and I'm sure various other factions, both new and old. But let's now move finally to handheld projectile weapons. Of course, slug throwers and shotguns are fairly common in the Star Wars universe. They're most often used for specialized tasks, like hunting Jedi or delivering a certain payload. However, there are more fantastical types of weapons more akin to a true railgun. For example, the bowcaster fires high speed projectiles, typically with some sort of explosive containment field. There are dozens of examples like this, concussion rifles, high tech spear throwers, etc, etc. Of course, we also have low tech weapons like bows and arrows, dart guns, regular spear guns, and other weaponry, which doesn't really count for the purposes of this video. The main takeaway should be that railguns in the Star Wars universe are producible on both a large and small scale. Handheld railguns existed, although they usually went by different names, but were really more rare when compared to energy weapons. 
The same can be said for space warfare. Railguns really don't see much use in modern Star Wars eras, although they do have some limited applications and they dominated early space combat. What's your favorite railgun? What Star Wars technology would you like to see me cover next? This is just one video in a continual series I've done on space and ground combat. Leave all your thoughts down below, don't forget to leave a like if you enjoyed and subscribe with notifications on for daily Star Wars content. Thank you guys so much for watching, as always this has been Eckhart's Letter, may the force be with you.